Hello, everybody. Um, in front of me, we've got the grass snake that we're going to be doing an assembly guide for today. Just a couple disclaimers before we get started. I'm not perfect at what I do. You might see some things that may seem odd to how you would do things, of course. Remember, this is just a, a suggestive guide that can help you in building your own. What I'm going to start out by doing is going over each of the parts, and we're actually going to be post-processing the parts real quick, and uh, just kind of showing you any spots that we're going to be looking out for that might kind of bite us down the road. So for starters, um, we'll just start post-processing. All right, so now that we've cleaned up the parts here, um, I wanna talk about a couple things to, to look out for. Firstly, here in the cage, we'll talk about this more as we solder. We just wanna make sure that these holes for the Honey Badger motors are nice and cleaned out. Sometimes it can be a little bit hairy in there. Here on the handle, one of the trickiest parts is this area where the pusher is going to be. And something to look out for is to make sure that underneath this overhang that you get maybe like a hook or something, maybe a knife, and you get behind there and really make sure that all the support gets out from down there. And in fact, here's a good call. I actually missed down there in the grip um, a couple of supports that are for the mag releases later, so I'll grab those. Uh, something else to look out for is on these mag release detents, sometimes there's a little bit of residue left kind of support, kind of not on these pegs. So you can take a little blade to it and get that off if needs be. Ours just doesn't, isn't looking so bad. So it looks like we might be able to just grab this one and we're good to go. Yep, just like that. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble the handle. Um, what I wanna go over real quick though is these three parts here. These can be problematic because these are the physical parts that are gonna be moving inside here. So we want a smooth trigger pull, of course. So we're gonna have to file down a couple of parts. So first, um, for this trigger part, this edge right here, I've found in my experience, if this edge is removed kind of like so with this action, of course, um, a lot more aggressive than that, but just to demonstrate, it's gonna, we're gonna be kind of removing it and making this circle a little smaller. Um, if we do that on this piece, that'll really help it be smoother later. And then on this one, it's almost the same concept. We're gonna be filing down this piece to make this bottom piece a little more round and just a little less invasive of that space over here. So like I said, we're gonna, and I'll show you what these look like after I'm done filing, of course, but it's kind of gonna be this action roughly. And lastly, the pusher is gonna need a bit of help. We're actually gonna just file along this surface and take off quite a bit of material to get it working properly. So I'm gonna step over to the belt sander to do that, but I'll show you guys what they look like after. We stepped over to the belt sander. The reason we sanded the top of this pusher here is because it's actually easier to sand the top of the pusher than it is to sand the awkward space on the roof here. So I found that it can just be quicker and easier just to get this done. And the goal, and I actually haven't tried this yet, so we'll see, the goal is for this pusher to slide freely in this slot. And right now it's not working, so we're gonna have a little bit more filing to do. We'll get to that, of course. As for the pusher link, um, you can tell that this edge was trimmed down quite a bit, just kind of all the way around, sanded it down. And that just gives it more room in this area down here. This edge is gonna be right up against the print down at the very bottom of that trench. And sometimes it can come out a little hairy down there. So once again, easier to sand this than it is to sand all that. 
but we're pr probably still gonna have to clean out a little bit of that. And lastly, the trigger, for the same reason as the pusher link, just needed a little bit of um, material taken off here so that way it'll slide down there easier later. So what I'll go ahead and do now is start working on this handle and get it nice and filed down so all the parts will work together nicely. As you can notice here, there was still a little bit of support left underneath this ridge and that was causing the pusher to be a pretty rough fit. So I'm just kind of using this hook here to get around. Of course, if you have a small file, this slot in the back will let you get kind of an angle on that. So we're just kind of working through it. And really the overall rule for this trigger assembly process is you gotta guess and check. You gotta file a little bit down here, put it in and check how it works and then find out where it's rubbing take it apart, separate the piece, file it down again, and give it another shot. So you might see a bit of that now as we time lapse again. Okay, so now, I, as you can see, I put a little bit of work into this pusher and I can pretty freely move it back and forth in its slot. There shouldn't be too much friction here. We might be adding a little bit of lube later, so we do have some room for error, but of course we want it to get as smooth as we can with just the file. Now what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna throw our trigger onto the trigger link, I guess you could call it. I'm not super familiar with the parts. What we're actually gonna need to do is we're gonna need to take one of our shell screws and we're gonna need to snip it in half. So that way it's just a little bit shorter. So I'm gonna do that real quick. All right, and then what's gonna happen is the shell screw is just gonna come straight down through the plate and the trigger is going to go into this notch, obviously. As soon as we've got the trigger in there, one of the first things we wanna check is we wanna rub our thumb over this part, rub your finger over that and make sure it's not sticking out too far. If, it feel, if you feel like it's protruding quite a bit, try and give it a little bit more of a turn without stripping it just that way we can get that screw nice and low so that way it's not gonna threaten the functionality later. So now that we've got this done, we're gonna throw it into our handle and make sure it moves around okay. And it seems to be doing all right. I do remember there being some gunk down there, so I'm gonna get that out real quick. All right, so we've got our trigger, making sure that moves okay. Now we're gonna take our trigger and put it into our trigger link on the small hole. And what you wanna do is you wanna pivot it around and make sure that this um, peg fits into the slot without too much friction. We wanna make sure that it's nice and smooth. If it is a little, does have a little bit of friction, just take a file and make this a little bit thinner if you can. So we wanna put that on there like this, and then we wanna drop this guy into the frame. And as we move it around, we can tell everything's still working okay. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in the axle or the, uh, the screw through that second hole in the pusher link and get it through to the other side. Now we don't need to put the screw all the way in because we're still testing. We're just gonna give it a couple turns. We can tell it went through and now we're checking to see that the trigger's moving okay. And it's actually not doing so hot right now. So we might need to do a little bit more fi filing to get this working. Okay, so after some guessing and checking and some continued filing, we finally got to the point where we can just with one finger get it moving back and forth pretty easy. Now, we're gonna back that out again, and we're gonna introduce the last piece, our pusher, which we already made sure was working okay in that slot. We're gonna put him into the top there, just like that, and then get him into his slot. And right now we can already tell 
It might gum up a little, but let's see what happens. All right, it's looking pretty good. Of course, I'm simulating the spring right now. We're gonna put that in next. But I can tell as I pull the trigger that the mechanisms are moving just fine without too much resistance. So we're looking good. Now for the trigger spring, we're gonna be using this little guy. And we're gonna be using two, um, two of these screws. These actually don't need to be cut down. If you want to, you can. What we're gonna do is I like to, what helps is to make sure that you're imagining how the screw is going to go in and make sure you put the screw in like clockwise with the spin of the springs. That way the spring doesn't undo itself. Kind of hard to explain, but I'm sure you can imagine what's going on. We're gonna put one screw on it and then this is kind of up to you how you want to do it. I like putting both screws in their slots first. That way I'm not dealing with things flying around too much. I've got the two screws and then these screws are going to go into this hole and this hole. So we're going to want to make sure that those are nice and clean. So I like to take the screwdriver and just work on that real quick. Just to make sure it'll be easier to get the this, this screw in there in a moment. Now this can be a little tricky, but so you might have to play with it a couple times, but the overall goal, remember, is just to get these screws to where they need to be and thread it a couple times and you're pretty much golden after that. If you are using full length screws like me, make sure you don't go too deep because if you go too deep, you'll go out the other side of this piece here and it'll rub against the bottom. So make sure you don't go too far. And then for this one, once again, this is pretty tricky, but kind of got to kind of pull it with you with the screwdriver and get it into that hole. The spring, the spring can kind of be tight. So bear with me here as I try and get this into where it needs to be. All right, so we got it threaded and we're good to start tightening it down a little bit. And make sure, once again, see this little hole right here? Make sure we don't go too far, otherwise the screw will pop out this side. That's if you're using full length ones, of course. All right, so we've got our trigger spring working in its place and let's make sure. Yep, it's working okay. That's what we want. We want to be able to pull it all the way back and let go and it slides all the way forward. That's going to be essential later. So that's looking good. And in fact, now that the trigger assembly is working, we can finally put this screw all the way in and we don't have much to worry about. When you tighten down this screw though, make sure you don't go too tight. If you go too tight, it'll actually clamp on all of the trigger mechanisms in here and make it all of a sudden very stiff. So it's okay if you don't go down all the way, if it sticks out just a little bit, it actually helps it function a little smoother. And there we go, that's the trigger assembly so far. We're gonna throw in these detents and we're gonna need this spring here. In your hardware kit, if you got your hardware kit from us, you should actually have this already pre-cut to the length that you need. Um, but I'm going to talk about the lengths and how they affect the mag release as we go. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to cut my spring down to the lengths that I need to get things started. So now that we've got these cut, we want them to be about a quarter inch long, um, each one. And Unfortunately, where we're going to be assembling is really deep in the handle. Uh, you can see these, let's see if I can point to it, it's kind of tough. Let me see. Like I said, it's going to be tough to show you, so you might just have to trust me as we're doing this. But this small detent is going to be the first one we're doing, and it's going to go in this slot closest to me. And then the next one, the long one, is going to go here. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to put the spring in either hole. So right there, come on, focus right there and right there. You can actually glue your spring on to the backside here. That might help you out if you want. I personally don't do that. 
Um, I like to put the spring in first and then the detent in on top of it. So what I did first is I set the spring in its little hole. Sometimes you can bring your finger up to, from down here and get that kind of, there we go, nice and straight. And the short one's pretty tricky, but we're basically gonna need to compress the spring into underneath this detent and get this tooth at the edge of the spring under a little notch where my left pointer finger is. So once again, kind of a verbal instruction, but let's see what happens. There it is. The tooth of the detent is stuck in that notch down there. And then as you can tell, it's kind of floating right here and I can kind of bounce it with my finger. Um, once again, really hard to show. I had to angle in the detent like this and then twist it into its slot while pushing the spring down. So hopefully those instructions will get you through it. It can be a little tough, but it works out. Now what we're gonna do, so that way this guy doesn't pop out, right? We're just gonna put our second long screw in here push our detent back and put that screw there just so he holds him in place so that way he doesn't jump out on us. And then we're gonna do the next one, which is the same concept. Fortunately, it's bigger and it's a little bit easier to work with. We're gonna put our detent spring into our slot, the little hole down there. Use gravity, hopefully, not like that. We've got our spring in its slot there. And then the angle of this is gonna be similar, except we're just gonna go, we're gonna go in like that and then clamp it down basically and make sure that the spring wraps around this peg here. So I've got my finger holding it in the slot and then I can just push it down on top of the spring and I want to make sure that the spring wraps around the peg there and then I can safely bring it all the way back and stick the screw the rest of the way to get it, keep it latched down. Now I'm going to thread the screw a couple times. This so is where it needs to be. You can check to see if everything worked out. If you put your, if you stick your finger in and you step, you uh, press on these tabs, you should feel them resist pretty well. Those are the teeth that kind of, that are going to fit into the slots of the magazines that we're going to be using. So first we're going to start by testing it and we're going to talk about the effects that the springs can have according to their lengths. So here we have a Talon mag and now these of course aren't mag releases. These are detents so they're going to take pressure to get in. So we can tell that one needed a bit of an umph to get it into its slot. So what we might want to do on this particular one, if you feel like it's too stiff, is you can actually pop that back out, take out the spring, snip it a little bit shorter so that way there's a little bit less of spring, therefore making it a little bit easier to slide the magazine in and out. However, if you make the spring too short, of course, you'll lose the, the tension and therefore it might not stick, as, stick into the magazine as much as you need it to. And additionally, if the spring is too long, it can actually bend the detents depending on how you printed it, if you did. Um, it can actually bend the detents to the point where the teeth point down and therefore the mag won't stay in as much as it'll come in very sturdily. So we're just gonna imagine we're tapping it in. There we go. We actually overshot it there, but it's a little stiff. So we might modify it as we go, but it's looking pretty decent. It's a good solid tap fit. Let's try our katana. There, that one worked really well. We shake it, doesn't come out. It's looking good. We'll try a printed katana. All right. And a printed talon. That one looked pretty good. That came in nice and easy and it takes a little bit to get it out. So it shouldn't be falling out on us. So looking pretty good. 
And as soon as you feel confident with, you know, how tight your detents are and how tight your magazines are in and out, you can go ahead and finish tightening this down just like the other one. And remember, don't tighten it too much because it might add, add some clamping force and therefore affect your trigger mechanism. Make sure that your trigger is still working nicely. But there are the mag releases. So now we're going to assemble the, the electronics of the grass snake. Fortunately, it's not too difficult. What we're going to need, of course, is a soldering iron. We're going to be soldering. You know, you don't have to do it exactly like me, but we go for functionality and durability. So um, just keep that in mind. What we're going to do first is we're going to put our motors into the cage. And like I said earlier, we want to make sure that those holes are nice and clean so that way the motors sit all the way to the bottom of their slots. So these are looking pretty decent. What I'm going to do, since I can kind of tell the holes aren't perfect, is I'm just going to take this and clean up those holes. And as I'm cleaning this cage, I actually want to mention something that gave us a problem a couple times. Sometimes um, when the darts are fed through here, they'll actually rub either on the top or the bottom and the plastic will actually tear a little bit of foam off of the darts and slowly ruin the darts. So something to look out for is to make sure that this hole comes out nice and clean. So just to be safe, I'm going to run the file over it real quick. And if you can rub your finger in there without too much snagging, in fact, ideally no snagging on your skin, then you should be good. However, um, what we do want to look out for is this little ramp right here. Kind of, you can see the circles ending to a point here. If you want to play it extra safe and not tear up any darts, um, you can just take a knife and kind of shave this off. And you can tell that that was kind of rounded out a bit instead of just being that sharp little angle. So with that, we can see light through each of the holes. In fact, this one still has a bit of gunk. There we go. We can see through the holes. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put our motors in. Now remember, what I like to do is I like to point the letters out and away from each other. You're gonna put in each motor like so. It helps to also remember the red dots and make sure they're opposite each other. If not, the motors are gonna spin the same direction and you won't be flinging any darts. <laughs> then I like to put this cap on just to keep these, uh, these things safe from bending. In fact, it looks like I might've bumped a couple and they're already a little bent. So it's nice to put that on just to keep them safe and help us as we push on the motor wheels. Now what we're going to do, this is up to you, but we like to use a little bit of a Loctite to uh, put in the motor screws. We're going to just be putting straight down each motor screw in these holes. It is critical, however, to make sure that you screw in these, um, these little itty bitty motor screws straight because if you're even a little crooked, they'll, they won't line up perfectly with the motor holes that are already tapped and it'll actually if it misses, it can kind of drill itself a new hole and then it'll be really hard to get them in there. So just make sure you're going nice and straight as you go down and make sure it's threading and catching just fine. So I'm gonna throw in the Loctite and then and get these motor screws in there. And as we screw these in, once again, we're just going for hand tight. We don't want to rank on these too much. So we got each of those screws in. We can tell it went pretty well because the motors aren't crooked. They're, they're nice and flush up against, the, up against the cage. 
And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on the flywheels. This part's pretty tricky um, because if the flywheels go on crooked, you'll have a lot of vibration in your blaster, which can be a problem and hinder performance. The goal is to just, as we push these flywheels on to the motor shafts, we're just gonna make sure that the force that we apply is straight down. We don't wanna push like that or like this. Um, we just wanna make sure that we're going straight down. So I like to actually start them by hand, just so I can kind of watch it as I go and get them started nice and straight. Now, you may notice it might rub here as we go down, so you might want to get it past that. All right, that one isn't on all the way, but we've got it started. We do the same for the other. Okay, so we've got them each started. What I like to do to push these down is I like to use this wrench here. And I actually like to use it as a little boost, kind of. I like to set it on top of the wheel like that and then push on it with my palm straight down on the table. Um, and I actually kept this card here to protect my hand as I push it down. So, gonna get those lined up and I'll show you what they look like after. I just finished pushing down the wheels, but as you can tell, hopefully you can tell that the one on the right is just a little bit lower than the one on the left. And we want to make sure they're at the exact same height on the shafts. So I like where the one on the left is at. So I need to raise the one on the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you can use a screwdriver or something, but I like to use this knife. Just kind of give it a little bit of an oomph to get it up to the same level of the other one. So there, I just pushed it up too high, but that's okay, because now I can just work on getting it back down to where I need to be. We've got the wheels nice and in the middle. As you can tell, when we look down the slot of where the dart is going to go, it's nice and even on the top and bottom. You don't see it offset too high or too low. Just right there, nice and in the middle. So we're going to roll with that, and we're going to move on to soldering now. We've let our soldering iron heat up, and we'll get started. Okay, so now we're going to solder. We've got our iron warmed up. I've got this vise here. It just, it helps me personally, you know, with this securing the cage, so I don't need to worry about it wiggling it around too much. Basically, just kind of follow along and we'll get the, the wiring going. We're going to need our switch, our XT60 connector, of course our wire, our heat shrink, and we're going to need to also be using our wire strippers to get things going. I like to use a Sharpie and uh, mark where I'll be stripping the wires. So that way I can get a nice connection going. So as you can see, I just kind of marked that real quick. So I know where to strip it later. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for this one over here. And you may have noticed end goal is this wire is going to be pointing up and this wire is going to actually technically to the right of the blaster and this one technically to the left. This one is going to feed down to the switch, which we'll get to, and this one is going to feed straight back to the battery. If you've never soldered before, I highly recommend just looking up a separate video on soldering. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. It's just make sure that we're twisting the wire. So we've got our wires ready to go. We've got our iron ready to go. And now we are going to get our solder ready. And we're gonna tin each of the surfaces that we'll be working with first. Um, if you want to go for a more compact build, you can fold these motor tabs down, but I like to just leave them up since they don't really need to be.
Okay, so now that we've got these arranged, we're gonna bring this wire down to the switch. Um, if your switch looks like this, we're gonna need to take this off. So just kind of bend it out and snap it off just like that. This wire, we're gonna solder onto this connection here. And then we're gonna continue the wire with the excess from this connection out towards the back. Cause I wanna grab the handle and I wanna put the cage in just for a moment to kind of visualize how long the wire is gonna need to be. Cause the switch is gonna go down in this slot right here. So with that in mind, probably, yeah, about that long. I'm gonna cut it a little long just to be safe. So that's gonna go down there and connect to the switch. So what we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to strip this, tin it, and connect it to our switch. We also want to throw on some heat shrink. Remember to put that on before we solder because you're not getting it on after. Now we're just gonna let that cool off before we put the heat shrink on and I'm gonna flip over to the other side and put on the remainder of our wire to this other connection of the switch. We'll cut off another section of heat shrink for this connection. Let's go ahead and slide that heat shrink to where it needs to be. And now what we like to do is we like to just take a lighter to it real quick to get those to melt down. And that's what it should look like roughly. We should have, well, that's about two and a half inches from the motor to this elbow here. And then we're gonna resume the wire off of this connection. Now what you're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna feed this wire between the motors here. Cause that's gonna go back towards the battery. And then this switch is gonna sit about right here. So we got, we got the length going pretty well. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and get the battery connection ready. So I like to put it in the blaster once again. It doesn't need to be all the way in or anything, just so you can kind of get a reference for it. Um, this is up to you how long you want your cable to be, but I like to kind of keep it somewhere in the middle, so that way we can tuck it into the slot later. So I'm just gonna put the switch where it needs to be, so that way we can get an accurate measurement here. And I'll just go ahead and decide to snip it right about there next to my thumb. There we go. And we're gonna need to put on our connector. So, I'm gonna take this guy. Obviously, the wire is gonna go right in there. What you wanna do, however, is we wanna make sure that we don't get the polarity mixed up. So, I'm gonna test that right now to make sure the motors are spinning the right direction. Now to test it, I like to just take a little battery, kind of squeeze it on either side and make sure the motors are spinning. All right, they are spinning. Just make sure they're spinning the right direction. Okay, that's looking good. So now we're gonna remember black is gonna be positive. Black positive, that's gonna go there. This is gonna go here and we're gonna solder that in. Of course, gonna throw on some heat shrink and get it all put together. So here we go. This is what the finished product should look like. So if you're having any trouble, probably just take a look at this, pause the video and get a feel for where all the wires need to be. But this is what we want it to, to look like when we're done.
All right, so now what we're gonna move on to is putting the whole thing together and getting it done. First off, I'm actually just gonna throw the iron sight into the upper slide, I guess you could call it here. Um, you can put this on however you please, but I like to just use a dotted glue and then just slide the sight in. Okay, push down, I'm gonna leave that on the side to dry because that's one of the last things we put on. Now, um, we're gonna need to put the cage in, put this panel in, put the scales on, and then get the muzzle going. So just like we did earlier, we're gonna wanna make sure that the holes that we're gonna be screwing into are clean. So you can tell that those are pretty dirty. So I like to just take the screwdriver and make sure that they're opened up. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the cage in. Make sure it slides all the way down. We're gonna tuck our switch into this groove here and you'll feel it kind of click in. Something critical though, to make sure everything is working, make sure the cage is all the way down, make sure the switch is all the way down, make sure your trigger is still working okay. Cause sometimes, remember if that screw on the trigger is sticking too far up, it'll rub against the cage and it won't be as smooth anymore. Another thing, this trigger, if you remember that panel is gonna push up against the button on the switch. That is essential. So what I like to do is I like to actually listen to it. If I pull the trigger gently, I can hear the switch disengage. So that means that when I let go, it is indeed pushing the button in on the switch, which means we're gonna work out. It's gonna work out for us. With that taken care of, we're gonna put in a shell screw on the side here through the hole in the switch. Do this gently, because if it's not lined up, you actually will peel back the plastic. Make sure, you know, it, it threads or goes into the hole in the switch. Ours worked out, so we're just gonna get that all the way down. Again, just hand tight, we're not going crazy here. Switch is nice and secure, we still hear that click. Yep, looking good. And now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to put a screw here and here to get the cage secure. Make sure that these are nice and clean. So we noticed that this screw stuck up a little and what that might, that might cause a problem later because the slide needs to come down and be nice and flush on top of it. And that'll actually squish the screw. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually gonna back it out and make sure that that hole is nice and clean. So that way the screw can sit down all the way in its groove. And sorry if I'm drifting out of frame, I'm trying my best to balance what you see on the screen and what I'm actually looking at. All right, so it looks good. Those screws are all the way down. They're not sticking out too much. So this, the top piece is gonna fit nice and flush later. Now we're gonna put on this panel here. What I like to do is just tuck this wire into this trench here, just kind of get it out of the way. And then this tooth is going to feed into this slot here. And it's actually gonna kind of click just like that. And you can tell that those holes lined up on the holes that were originally on the handle. And this, once again, is just gonna be two screws. Boom, boom. All right, so we've got this panel in, we've got our cage in, and now what we're gonna do is throw the scales on. The scales are gonna use the same screws that we used for the motors, and it's just gonna go through the hole into this one. Of course, these can be a little tricky since it's such a small screw. When you put it in, just make sure you're twisting it in straight and make sure that your holes are lined up. Otherwise, you risk stripping it in the wrong place or just not doing so hot in general. All 
And remember not to over tighten these. They will strip very easily since they're so small. Just a little snug. As soon as you feel it snug up, you're probably good. Okay, so we've got the scales on. We're not feeling those screws stick out, looking good. Trigger's still working. We're gonna go ahead and prepare our cross pin for the muzzle. You can tell that it's got a little bit of a nub here at the end from the print, and that'll lead to a tight fit. So this is of course to your, to your preference, but we like to just file them down a little bit to make sure that they fit easier later. All right, with that cleaned up a little bit, let's see how we're doing. All right, that's a pretty decent fit. Now, let's make sure everything comes together nicely. This is gonna slide right on top. Use the cage to kind of guide it in. There we go. And now the muzzle, these grooves are going to slide in here. Just like that. Something to look out for. Make sure, it's easy to forget, but make sure the supports here are taken out, if that's your case. Boom, and now let's see how well that crossbin fits. There we go. And that, this piece here, is gonna just snap on just like that and keep everything nice and held together. And that is our grass snake. Okay guys, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put the battery into the blaster and cycle some darts through it to see it work. Um, to get the battery in, we're just gonna pop this off gently. We're gonna push out our pin, slide off the muzzle forwards, just like that, and bring this up. So this is the reverse of how we put it together. And we're gonna plug in our battery. Uh, our battery is really fat. We don't recommend using batteries that may be of this particular variety. Um, but we're going to make this one work. It might be a little bit of a tight fit, so hopefully yours will do a little better. We're going to tuck that plug into the side there. And just get everything fitting nicely. Just kind of imagine, you know, this box, that's what you've got to work with. And we're going to, without pinching any wires, we're going to get that in there, hopefully. There we go. Looking pretty good. And there you have it, the grass snake. This is a Grass Snake by Freedom Blasters. It is a semi-automatic, lipo-powered flywheel blaster. It takes both Talon and Katana magazines. And the battery can be accessed through the lock in the back and a pin through the muzzle. And you have access to your battery compartment. Slide the battery in like that, like that. A half pull of the trigger activates the flywheels and pulling it the rest of the way fires a dart. And the detent mechanism holds the magazine tight. <laughs>